Hello and welcome to yet another album review where today I'll be reviewing the album um, Escape by Michael Jackson. Um, it came out uh, May 13th of this year, 2014. <clears throat> A little chart information about it. It, um, it went gold in both the US and the UK and it also peaked at number one on the Billboard Top R&B uh, Hip Hop album charts. Um, it was released by MJJ uh, Records, which is Michael Jackson's you know, um, record uh, company, and also released on Epic Records. Um, the singles are Love Never Felt So Good and A Place With No Name. Um, a little note about this album. Um, all the songs are actually remixes of original recorded material spanning all the way back to 1983. These songs have all been reworked, uh, especially for this album, at the hands of exec um, executive producer Timbaland. Um, being that this is the deluxe edition that I have, you can see it's all nice and gold here. Um, it also comes packed with the original recordings from years past, um, but I will not go over those individually, as we are focusing on the main album as it was meant to be sequenced. So let's get this started. Um, the first track is Love Never Felt So Good. Um, in the opening track, we are treated to a nice string section before we go into the main song. Uh, Michael is singing with a very intimate, sensual voice in the verses, until we go into the chorus where he's shouting, but never losing that sense of sexuality that holds on throughout the entire track. Um, the string section also holds true throughout the track, as that's what really makes uh, this upbeat pop song. Uh, near the middle, we have a gorgeous interlude of piano and strings before going into another verse. Um, keep, uh, keep those strings in mind, by the way, um, because this is a common theme in the album, as you'll soon see. Um, the song itself is a typical love song, but done in, um, done in the only way that Michael Jackson can do it. Um, this song was originally recorded in 1983. Um, I don't believe it's been specified what album it would be for, though. Um, you know, it's a perfect way to start off the uh, brand new Michael Jackson album, though. Um, track number two, Chicago. Now, this track is completely different from the previous one, as it has more of a hip-hop beat to it, um, with a synthesized bass that continues throughout the track, and serves as the song's hook, I suppose. Um, this track was originally recorded in 1999 uh, for the album Invincible, um, but failed to make it on there. While the subject matter is interesting, uh, where it's about Michael meeting a girl who, as the song describes, was trying to live a double life where she and Michael fell in love, but she never told him that she was already in, um, with someone and basically creating a love triangle, this is unfortunately probably the weakest track on the album, I would say. Um, all the tracks are really interesting. Um, all, I mean, all that's really interesting about uh, this song is the bass line and the subject matter, um, and it also doesn't really feel like something Michael himself would produce. Um, track number three, Loving You. Starting off with the piano intro, this track comes packed with short but powerful bursts of synthesized instrumentals, and it's probably my favorite per, um, track on the album personally. Um, it was originally recorded between the years of 1985 and 1987 for the Bad album. Um, the lyrics are great and rather self-explanatory. The instrumentals are great, nothing too complex or too boring, um, and I love the beat on this one. The vocals are almost whispered, uh, making it all the more sincere and intimate. And now we have track four, which is A Place With No Name. Um, if you heard the song A Horse With No Name by the band America, this song might sound very familiar to you, as it borrows a lot from that song, especially the melody. Uh, the instrumentals, however, are vastly different. Um, as the main riff is very distinctly done on a synthesizer, so we have another synthesized track here. Um, it was originally recorded in 1998, but for what album, we don't know. Uh, the premise of the song is about Michael portraying a character whose Jeep is broken down on the side of the road, and as he starts, um, as he gets out and starts walking down the road, he sees a woman who proceeds to take him to a place that appears to be paradise, uh, perhaps a metaphor for escapism, which is the main theme of this album. Uh, near the end of the song, though, the character realizes that he is fin uh, his fam he has family back home. I'm sorry, and reluctantly leaves this paradise, regardless of the girl not wanting him to go. The song describes the character as seemingly lonely, and the girl telling him that he's got a friend. Um, this is truly the inner mind of Michael, as he was very he was indeed a very lonely person. Um, the beat is steady and rather up tempo, and it's a bit of an R&B track mixed with a hip hop feel, as most of the album is. So track five, we have Slave to the Rhythm, um, again starting out with a string intro with the sounds of chains rattling and bass drum to represent stomping. It's a bit of a dirge feel, until we break into the actual song, that is, uh, which is very upbeat and practically seems, it feels like a party. Um, however, the subject matter of the track is actually rather depressing. Um, it's about a girl who's basically being overworked, and the rhythm in question is actually a metaphor for the grind, um, to which she's a slave to. 
a very unappreciative husband and a very unappreciative boss who keeps her working overtime. Um, she decides to run away from home, yet is called back home, realizing that without her, um, her household can't survive. So she swallows her pride and returns back to the very place holding her down. Um, this track has a strong pop feel and almost adding some Latin feel to it as well, uh, much like Blood on the Dance Floor. Um, this track was originally recorded in 1991 for the Dangerous album. Then we have uh, track number six, uh, Do You Know Where Your Children Are? Um, this track has a rather interesting synthesized bass line going for it. Uh, it's got a hip-hop feel to it, um, and the subject matter, again, is rather depressing. It's about children being raised in broken homes with drunken fathers and prostitute mothers, um, and the children are running away from home, um, who then become lost, raped, and worse. Uh, the instrumentals aren't really anything to write home about. Um, it's mainly drum machine and synthesizer, so it actually feels quite barren. Um, uh, so, yeah, not uh, not something I could see Michael producing either, honestly. Uh, this track, uh, too, was recorded for the Dangerous album in 1990. Track number seven, we have Blue Gangsta. Um, once again, we have another string intro with a dark, foreboding feel. Before we actually get to into the main section of the song, uh, this actually continues for a while as Michael sings the first verse. Um, after that, we blast into a heavy, into hit, um, heavy hip hop goodness of the song. Um, this track is rather polarizing for me, honestly. Um, as again, it doesn't feel like something Michael would really produce, but I can't help but love the beat and blaring horns, as, um, as well as the emotional scream singing that Michael does. Um, this song subject matter deals with gangsters much in the same vein as Smooth Criminal, from, for example. It basically talks about how someone did Michael's character wrong, and that he's going to get back at them. Um, this track was originally recorded in 1998 for the Invincible album. It's one of my favorite tracks on this album, and I just love everything about it. Um, it's dark, it's in your face, and it's exciting to listen to. And finally, we have track number 8, Escape, or Escape, I guess it would be pronounced. Um, uh, finally, yes, we come to the final track, um, as well as the la- uh, yes, yes, okay. The title track, um is the last track on the album. Um, it begins with Michael whispering escape and then uttering the name of the record, um, the record producer, Dark Child. Um, much like the previous track, it's dark and rather foreboding, and uh, but it uh, deals with something totally different, actually. Um, it's basically an anthem to escapism, as the title would suggest. Um, some really cool things about this track are the tight harmonies that make themselves very known within the verses, as well as uh, some amazing horn work that's actually reminiscent of material from Dangerous especially um, the song Jam. Um, this track was originally recorded in 1999 for the Invincible album. Um, a great, hard-hitting way to end a pretty great album. Now, overall, um, this is a great album, uh, and a very good listen, but a great Michael Jackson album? Not exactly. Um, I know he's been gone for several years before this album was created, and there was a whole team of people who worked uh, closely with Michael to create this album. Uh, but as I expressed in some of the tracks, uh, this album just doesn't feel like a Michael Jackson album to me. Um, at times it feels rather overproduced, and at other times it feels very underproduced. Um, some of the originally recorded, the, re the original recordings I actually prefer over these reworked uh, tracks. It's very hip-hop heavy, and I know Michael used a lot of hip-hop elements in later working, uh, recordings such as History and Invincible, but for some reason it just doesn't really sit well with me here. Um, I mean... I really enjoy listening to the album, but talking about it critically and analyzing all the work done on here compared to Michael's past work is really daunt is a re it's a really daunting thing. Um, I love Michael, but the work on here just doesn't feel like him. And even though it's his voice we hear, um, yeah, it just it really pains me to say stuff like that. Um, but it's in no way a bad album, huh, no pun intended. Um, it just doesn't feel like the Michael on um, it just doesn't feel like Michael on some of the tracks, honestly. Um, one thing the album does really well, however is it sticks with the whole idea of escapism and running away from the world. Um, the theme never goes away, so that's good, uh, be it through getting away with the one you love or running away from your problems. Um, so it does a really, really great job of holding that theme all the way through the album. So anyways, thank you for joining me on yet another album review. If you want an album that you like or may suggest um, for me to review, just leave that down in the comments below, or even a song, too. I can do that. Um, just leave it down there. Um, so, anyways, thank you for joining me once again, and so long.